Show me how. Okay, so here's the kitchen that I've been working on. Obviously, you see the footprint now. This is what it's going to look like. I haven't said anything yet uh, because I've had to kind of leave these here or rest them until I was going to set them because of space demands and limitations. This is where... Uh, I was uh, led to have to put the cabinets. So, let me explain this out a little bit. The stove is going to go over here. Okay. Over in that corner, right here. This is a 15-inch cabinet. So, the 30-inch stove and a 15-inch cabinet... In simple mathematics, is 45 inches. So, some of the caveats here, when you've got a wall darting out, is you want to see which way it's square. Okay, so if it's perfectly square, there's not a problem. If your wall is shooting that way, meaning it's more of a... Um, A wider, wider than exact square. I'm trying to think it's an obtruse, acute. It's not an acute. I think it's an obtruse square, where actually your your square wall is not perfectly square, but shooting out like that, it's not going to be a problem. If it's more of an acute square, then which means it would, it's not square, then you're going to have to be concerned with the narrowest portion of the wall, which if it's, if it's shooting out off of your back wall, then you're going to want to move your cabinets inward a little bit. So that's something you have to factor. This one is not. So I can come off the back, get my 45 inches, is what I need minimum, for the oven and the cabinet. Now I'm going to go a hair wider because of the countertop. You could add like a half inch on each side. You could have a quarter inch on each side. You could do it exact, but then you're going to kind of scuff up your, your oven, moving it into your range, depending on the width of that. And they're usually exactly 30. So that's for your oven range openings to let you know regarding that. Obviously, your utility's got to be in the right spot. I do have to move a gas line over here, a sliver. I'll show you that when I get to it. You can see here that I pretty much got this sink almost exactly in the window area. Okay? And I'm going to explain this to you right now. So I've got my, my mark centered. Okay? Got a little mark there, centered. And um, that'll tell me where I need to put the uh, base cabinet here, which is right here. It's slightly a hair off, because I'm trying to keep this peninsula in because I've got a floor vent, okay? But obviously you want your sink exactly in the middle. This will be super, super close. Now remember, I bought all of these cabinets from Habitat for Humanity. So all the cabinets that you see in this kitchen and a few extras only cost me 1200 bucks. And they have all the soft closers. So the soft closers are when you touch the drawer and they get to a certain point, they soft close. Concealed hinges. Um, I actually have some of these uh, false front trays. You know, uh, the only bad cabinet was a sink cabinet. Some of them I had to shear up. But the fact that I have all dovetail maple drawers, all a plywood box, I mean, it was a bargain. They wanted 1500 bought them all, so they gave me a, a discount. And then, of course, if you remember, I've got, got a cap, uh, camera that swivels. If you remember, we built in this pantry here. Okay, which was a great deal here. So, that's what you're going to see. Okay. All right. 
is the built-in pantry with the slide out. So I've got I got that too. So that's something if you guys are in a pinch, you can look for situations like that that will help you out. The bathrooms usually you can get a good deal on the cabinet. So let's go back to what this is looking like here. All right. This is it. This is a peninsula. Okay, this is a peninsula style kitchen. So I've just got it back fastened. There's that vent that's given me a concern. So if I can move it over just a little bit, it won't be an issue. You want to square up this peninsula to your back wall. Now, you need to find out if your back wall, which way your back wall is going. So if your back wall is shooting outward, then you need that to take that into consideration when you're setting this peninsula here. But obviously your fronts have to be square. I'll explain that to you when I fasten the cabinets together. What you're trying to do, what you're trying to do when you build a kitchen is the, the biggest focus of all is, is you basically have a box, but it's 3D. Okay, got height, width, depth. And you're trying to put a square, perfect square box inside of a box that may not be square. So when you're doing a kitchen, you want the lowest point off the ceiling to start from. Wherever that is, you need to find it. You need to find the most narrow uh, or shallowest, if you're looking depth from front, front, front to back, the most shallow location and then pull off of that and then the highest point off the floor. Those are your three points of concern before you start your kitchen install. Once you get that, you're going to have a clean install. So that's part of your layout and that's super important. And that's why kitchens are the hardest because they're 3D. If you hang a door, doors are kind of hard. They're not that hard. They're easy for me. That's only 2D. Okay. Obviously, a floor is 1D, a wall is 1D, okay? So, back to the uh, kitchen install. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start installing these. I'm going to try to give you little blips. Stay with me on it. Um, and let's see, what else do I want to share with you folks? There's nothing really else. This is an L-style kitchen, the shape of an L. One wall. It's open on the right, would make, which makes it a heck of a lot easier. Of course, you got the peninsula. Usually peninsulas always have an open end, hence a peninsula. Uh, the only thing that would make this easier is if there was no wall over here on the left. Okay, which you can see. And uh, stay with me. So what I'm gonna share with you is I like to clamp all of my cabinets together first in the front if I know I can clamp quite a few together and that's what I'll do in this video. Okay folks, so what I'm doing is I took off the false front, your uh, false front uh, trays, your drop down trays, which are in your false front area. Okay, what I'm doing now is taking the doors off so I can clamp face frames, which are important. And this is the only cabinet that's kind of soiled up a little bit. All the other ones are really good. So, this is where I'm at. I do have a back. I could have sanded this super nice. I do have a bag for it. Um, and I'll end up putting that on. A lot of your higher end cabinets, I'm not, I'm not sure why this didn't have it. Looks like it did have, there's some slots here so it may have some sort of a sliding panel. Usually they have a back and you make your cutouts. A lot of guys just cut out a big hole because they're hacks. So, what we'll do is we'll clamp these up Okay, and a lot of these cabinets are usually three inch. So if you take inch and a half and an inch and a half, 
This one is not three inch because it's a lazy system cabinet. All right, so it's a little bit less. What you want to do is you want to clamp these frames so you can fasten them together. You want to get this flush. My four points of, points of priority when I work in construction are flush, level, plumb, square. Those four concepts. Okay, so what I like to do, like I said before, if I know I've got a grasp on what's going on, this floor, we furred it up, but for some reason it didn't come out quite as nice as I would have thought. Um, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so I'll put a little shim under here momentarily, all right, to help me clamp this up. Pull your drawer out. I don't need that, it's just going to get in your way. And because this, this is going to have to be hinged the opposite side, just take these off. All right. Again, normally I would have a wide open workspace. But because of the uh, particulars on this, this is what I'm dealing with, which is not a big deal at all. Okay, so squeeze clamps are the best. together and like I said if you can if you have the liberty it's better to put together a couple cabinets first because you're, you're going to have a lot easier of a time squaring everything up and leveling everything now that's a small clamp didn't realize that was that small. I mean, this might be a small one too. Yeah, these are not going to work. All right, well, that's unfortunate. I probably have enough. I can always pull it back up or grab one from the other side. So your concern is flush level here. Okay, I'm going to drill these out. You want to use a a 332nd or an eight, uh, eighth inch drill bit. You can put them in where they hide. Okay, you're not going to see any here. So you can drive a screw in here. Free drill these. You don't go all the way through. You go on the frame. And, and then you can just penetrate a little bit into the next frame. Okay. You want you can hide your screws behind the hinges that's always a nice gesture so hang tight just to show you a couple of different screws okay you can use these to fasten up against the wall your cabinet they're a washer box head two and three quarter to three inch these are two and a half those are basically three Either one is ideal, three inch, preferably. I love these, these little kind of self tappers, minimal head, these are fantastic. You can just slightly pre-drill with these. Everybody uses drywall screws, they did back in the day. These are the ones that 
Uh, these here are the ones that Lowe's gives you, or the, the manufacturer for your installation kit. Okay, so, but these screws are fantastic. They're so minimal. They drive in super clean if you wanted to buy these. It's like 10 bucks for a small box, like a five, I think a five pound or whatnot. A hundred, I think a hundred, you get a hundred, hundred screws. So anyways, okay. And we're just penny pinching on this kitchen because it's a mobile home. So you'll see here how these go in. Um, I'll use these here, the Lowe's kit. With the Lowe's kit. I'll start off with those so you can see what's happening here. All right. So there you go. So there's one screw in. Okay, you can come down here to the bottom again. It might have moved on you. This middle one's good. So I'll sink in here. Okay, looking good, feeling real nice and flush. See, there's a little bit of a gap there. So you could try to get down a little bit more with your clamp. And I'm on the outside a little bit. It's furred on the outside. So the trick there is I need a smaller whack block just to show you folks. Okay. That way you know it's flush, right? There's little tricks you can use. Alright. I'll show you how this one. Show you. Okay. Show me how I won't show you how. I'll drive this little one in here. This is a super high-end job. I would make sure everything lines up right. I mean, as far as the screws. Okay, so this one's done. When you get to that point, you can pull one of these off, take it to your other side, if you so desire. It's a little bit narrower because I told you that one over there, To an uh, inch and a quarter style, not inch and a half. So this one was a little bit narrower than the other side. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Drill holes. You can drill them wherever it's the least invasive spot. So you don't see your screws if you're really concerned. Nothing wrong with doing that. Nothing wrong with doing it right. Okay. And this is real flush. Height's good, the bottom's a little off because of that cabinet manufacturer. I probably didn't line it up right. This is real common. Cabinets today, a lot of hackery. Nobody does anything right. They have all of these digital tools and jigs and and they still screw it up. Go figure, huh? All right. Stay with me. There you go. So, let's see here. Get this tip. I'm changing tips on you folks. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use these. I found that drilling them out just a little bit, which I drilled out too far, is nice. So, but these are self-tapping, so. And 
they go in and you can't even see the head. It's, it's really a thing of beauty. So, what I'm using, I think it's a, it's a number 15 star. Okay, and let's get down to the bottom. Alright folks, so, it's a little, that's good. That's what you got now on your clampage on the front, okay? I'm going to show you one. Boy, I really had that zoomed in, didn't I, guys? Sorry. Anyway, so I fastened here, here, here. Three on the base, okay? I fastened here in the middle and one at the bottom. What you want to do now is, because you have overhangs on your styles, they're extended. I have... about seven sixteenths here the gap okay because the tile the, these styles are extended all right i'm going to take the bone off here maybe this okay i'm going to show you this the top the styles are extended okay right here okay right here they are on the edge irrelevant so you have a 7 16 gap here. I like to put that in the back. So I rip down just a couple pieces of material, put them in the back. That way these cabinets are about as square as can be. And positionally right at the back, there's no movement, okay? That's what I do. And then I'll fasten this, this, these three pieces together to the wall. And it really comes out so much cleaner than doing one at a time. Now here on this, this Lazy Susan, I've put that two by four all the way to the back because I knew I was gonna have to back it with something, okay? Plus I can add another piece here to fasten or whatnot. All right, dishwasher goes here. Keep your 24 inches always. I'll show you what I do on that. And then this will be the end cabinet. Now I've got to put Hardy backer underneath there. Main thing is I'm trying to get these folks water today. Hook back up, okay? And the oven can slide in for a moment. This is just kind of an inch by inch kitchen, but for the price, it's going to be turning, it's going to turn out fantastic. And again, there's that pantry. Look at this, isn't that awesome? Yeah, okay. Stay with me. Okay, so I wanted to show you what I did here. I put these little fillers in here. Break my leg. Put these little fillers in here and here just to keep everything from getting racked. Yeah, there's a little bit of warpage here. They're used cabinets. They're sidewalls that are flimsy. It's completely irrelevant. So. You know, I didn't make the cabinets. Also, they were pulled out from a job. So, and I'm saving probably ten, twelve thousand dollars by using these pools, and it's only a mobile home. So, okay, real quick. So, I'm using the level front to back. I'm using a long level on the long run, one in the front. Okay, so you can do that once you got the cabinet put together. Looks like it was splitting from the seams here a little bit because. I um, my staple are jammed, which is usually what I fasten these with is my staple gun. So anyway, so this is looking really good, folks. Um, I've got my distance here that I want for my oven. Okay, and then I'm pretty much center. I'm hedging just a little bit. Okay, just a sliver. So I can keep that, uh, that vent clear. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So once I get this, once I get this peninsula set up right, I'll clear it or I can move it over just a sliver. So these are some of the things, again, that you want to factor in. Um, and uh, show me. Here you 
guys can see the levels are pretty good. Okay, the front to back on the left side is not that great. But these are spot on. And these are Stabilas, these are dead on. All right, this right side came out good. Left side, not that great. You know, I just don't want to play with it too long. Uh, cabinets could be racked. They were pulled, so they could be out of square. But you'll see, folks. There you have it. All right? Now, the front to the height, I believe, is decent, too. You can see it here. You know, there's a little bit of boom, and I could probably shim up the back. But anyways, you get the, the crux of it. All right, spot on, spot on. Front to back over here was close. All right, I'm not gonna piddle around with that because you guys get the idea, all right? Stay with me. Just showing you that I filled in a little bit more of the hardy back underneath for this last cabinet. Again, the dishwasher will go there. That panel, that end panel, that peninsula panel, that will uh, fasten to this end cabinet. And I'm just waiting for that to dry. I'll bore a hole for the receptacle and bingo. Okay, so there you have it. Show me how back. So here's what the kitchen's shaping up to look like, folks. You want to put a block underneath here. Watch my tape measure. I have a block underneath here. Not these. These are fur blocks. Leveling blocks. Okay, and this is what it looks like. You can see down the line there, it's pretty darn straight you got to watch the cameras because uh, 4k tends to curve stuff so anyway so this is what it looks like all right um, let me show you here now when you're up against the wall the best way to do this would be put like a 24 inch block in here to keep your space equal I'm not sure how it is here. I'm off a little bit. Um, not sure what the deal is with that. It's probably this size. So I'll rectify that. I can move this over a little bit. So I'm off probably a, an eighth, which is no good, that's for sure. So I'll clean that up. Probably over here. Probably this cabinet. Anyways. You get the idea. Uh, so still, I'm a, I'm a tad high on this side, and I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really like that. But it's not too bad. Okay, I'm a tad high here on the L. Uh, here is good. Let's take the Stabila, since the Stabila is the best. I can come over here, and you can see, I mean, it's a hair off. But it's not bad considering this was a mobile home that just got shifted around. All right, it's still within the bubble. Most people would think that is considered excellent. And it is. I'm just a little fanatical. So anyway, so check it out. So again, I got all these cabinets from Habitat for Manity. If you have any, uh, me being a kitchen guy, I figured I would make it work. Again, I keep going back to that pantry. So I'll be tying all of this in. I'll have a temporary sink in. I'll show you guys that in a minute, but this is what it turned out to be. I'll start putting the cabinet doors on. All right, got a piece of half inch birch plywood. All right, I ended up putting down a little more hardy so I could use it to shim this, but this is pretty, this thing's not going anywhere, okay? Solid, rock. I've got my power in here that will come up that was here before that was in that big pillar. If you saw one of my earlier videos, okay? So here's the juice right here, folks. Caught up in the back trying to get me electric here. So here's the power. So I'll have power on the end. It's gonna be nice. Watch some of my other videos and I'll try to edit this one together. And I hope that this helped you. Have good levels, have good tools, take your time. Um, it's a lot better footprint. I'm not gonna put any hanging, uh, hanging cabinets 
as far as a hanging peninsula coming off the wall, I'll probably just put one cabinet right here because I'll have the breakfast nook overhang, okay? Thank you. Thanks for uh, joining me. Get a measurement here, and I appreciate it. And I hope it's helpful, and please subscribe and all that good stuff. All right. Show me how. Out. Oh.